Shenanigans, working stiffer than mannequins. Vader time like a mannequin. Mega powers, I'm savaging. Peep the babbling, got him shook off the verbal acumen. I'm the main event, meaning nobody coming after him. The topics we be tackling, ankle locking and tapping them. I hate seafood, but I might throw the Boston crab on him. Uh, you know sometimes it gets heated. Uh, you know sometimes it gets heated. What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to Heated Shenanigans Podcast. You got the boys back here. Chase, Scott, and the people's child, Paul Bearer's illegitimate son, Mike. Oh, it's going to be a long episode. It is. Well, one thing that we had discussed and we wanted to kind of talk about it here on the episode on the podcast is probably AEW's most talked about angle, and that is who is under the devil mask in AEW, causing all the chaos, all the assaults. So we're going to kind of go over who we think's under, who should be under, and who shouldn't be under the mask. So are we I doing feel... who who we think it is first? Yeah, sure, we can do that. So it's not who we who it should be or who it shouldn't be. It's who we think. Um, Chase, you go first, man. Yeah, who why you, you got to think it is? Why you got to put the pressure on me, dog? Um, be, be ready, dude. So I would like to think it's Adam Cole, but Adam Cole is hurt, so. <laughs> That kind of throws that out the window. Um, I really think, and you guys are going to hate me for saying this, I really think it could be Flair. I'm not, Woo! that's not an exaggeration. Woo, brother. That's I'm what saying. You think. Do I, you have anything to base this off of? Have no. you seen the, the man wearing the mask can walk, so I don't think it's Flair. <laughs> I mean, they are also short, though, and, like, Flair is all hunched over now, so it could be him. Who Man better? Man went from being the black scorpion to the devil. Who better? Anyone. Who better? Yeah, literally. Yeah. Brian Cage. Put make Brian Cage, then. I think, I think, even though he's injured, I don't think it's a full work. I think his injury wasn't as serious as it was let on, and I think he'll be back in time. I think it is Adam Cole. Um, it doesn't make sense for it to be anyone else. Unless we're going for the swerve factor, not actual swerve the wrestler, but like you know, to swerve the fans, I think it's Adam Cole. I don't. That's just who my I, who I think it is based off everything. That's not who I think it should be, or who I, who it shouldn't be. But that's who I think it is. I agree. I, I'm gonna go with I think it is Adam Cole under the mask. It majority of it makes sense for it to be Adam Cole, and it would be a nice like. Not really a double turn because they didn't really do it at the same time, but yeah. MJF is now a solidified babyface. Adam Cole. It is worth mentioning, Adam Cole's best work has always come as a leader of a heel group. And they would still have to reveal who the other members are that are attacking uh, the, the random individuals as well. But I, I think this would be a great way to launch Adam Cole back into the main event scene after being off with the injury. But again, well, how long do you think they're going to make us wait on this? I think we get the big reveal at the pay-per-view in December. I think it's called world's end. I believe is the name of the pay-per-view. Um, I think a lot's going to culminate with the MJF stories. As far as everyone coming after him, I think we're going to get a big multi-man match with Joe Wardlow. Um, I can't think of anyone else who has problems with him, but I'm sure there's more than I'm forgetting about right now. We're going to get a multi-man match, and then at the end of that match, the devil is going to show up. I don't know who exactly it is, but he's showing up, brother. So I guess uh, let's go to who shouldn't be under the mask. Ric Flair. (laughs) He just (laughs) Hogan. Hogan. Um... Jungle Boy, I don't think that makes sense at all. I've seen speculation that it... <laughs> what? You've heard speculation on it being Jungle Boy Jack Perry? Mamma Mia. That's a, that's, a tasty, that's a tasty piece of news she just brought. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, I don't think it should be Jungle Boy. I don't think that makes sense I at think, all. I think, honestly, Mamma Mia, I think... <laughs> 
I think he has the charisma to pull it off. I think I think we are not giving Jeff Terry a fair fair shot, boys. That's all I'm saying. I don't think <laughs> my job. <laughs> Sorry, I sneezed. I sneezed again, boys. I don't know what's happening out here. With uh with Jungle Boy. I think that's too much of a reward type situation. Oh, hey, like this all happened uh, with Punk. By the way, this is going to put you into the biggest role of your career, and you're going against the biggest star in our company. Welcome back. I mean, you just said a name. I've I've heard rumors, more speculation, (laughs) more so. CM Punk. And And I have said... If they could pull this off, if they could make the world believe the devil doesn't exist, as the quote goes, that he's gone. We we think he's gone. People think he's showing up at Survivor Series next week. But maybe he shows up tonight. Maybe he shows up at World's End. CM Punk, I think, would be the best possible version of a swerve because I don't don't see it coming. You know what I mean? They really made us think he's gone. What do you say, Chase? Um, I, I don't know. There's so many problems with punk. Like I love CM Punk, but like you got in a fight with three of the EVPs. Then after you came back from being injured and suspended for all, almost a year, you got into a fight with somebody else, which led to you getting fired. I don't, I how don't know. How about this? How about this? Let's spit. I'm going to spit fire some names. I'll give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. All right. Fair. Start with one we just said. CM Punk. Thumbs up, thumbs down on if we it would be cool. Not thumbs cool? in the middle. If it's cool. If it's a cool idea. Um, Edge. Tony Khan. Britt Baker. Damn. Malachi Black. Oh shit. Yes. I think I think we just stumbled upon the House of Black, and I th- I've thought. Um, since his WWE days, he should have he could have been in the world title contention. This would put him right there. That... Also, doing another sort of religious gimmick is a man named Miro. I I think less likely to be <laughs> Miro is stocky dude. Unless they just had someone else play the role until he unmasked himself. I don't think it's Miro, but but yeah, Malachi Black. Damn, I, I got that's a... a fire one. I got, could it possibly turn out to be MJF? Is it, it would it be entertaining? What, what do we get out of it? What is, what would it be his MO for being the devil? It's his moniker. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, but like, what did he save himself? But like, he, he made everybody believe that he wasn't like a total scumbag. And even if he is a scumbag, he's their scumbag. And this is just like, a way for him to swerve everybody. To um, me, to me, it would just be like when Sting takes off his mask and it's still Sting. It's not gonna hit great. Like, oh, it's MJF. Okay, well then we just, just you could have just said it was MJF the whole time, then bud, because doesn't mean anything now. Do you think if it is revealed to be MJF under the mask, that is just as bad as revealing Vince as the higher power? Yes. As bad? No. I think. Vince was like more of a like this is the wrong idea. I think it's just gonna fall flat. Like I don't think it's which I guess in wrestling terms you want a response, and I don't think it's gonna get much. So maybe in that sense, yeah. But I, I don't. I don't know if it's gonna be worse. That Malachi Black pick, that yeah. that's really good. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm... so. We we could get a story angle angle similar to when um, Daniel Bryan joined the Wyatt family. Maybe have MJF sort of join. After he's revealed and then turn on him, then we have the devil versus the devil. It'd be great. I will say this. If if it's not revealed tonight at the pay-per-view for AW and Punk doesn't show up at Survivor Series, it's going to be in full-blown speculation. It is CM Punk. Until CM Punk shows up somewhere, people are going to be speculating CM Punk showing up somewhere. There's just no way to hide that point i've seen i think we did an episode last week or something where i said people think he's showing up in tna people think he's showing up in new japan until he shows up somewhere the fucky the rumors are just gonna come fill it in like an empty cup of water just fill it all the way to the top so yeah we're gonna keep getting that 
let me ask you guys this. How would you feel about if it was a debuting wrestler, a new signee? What if it was a Dolph Ziggler that shows up? I know it would be a little convoluted because he'd been affiliated with WWE, but how would it be received? I'm not anti it being someone like a Dolph Ziggler or Mustafa Ali would also be cool. I know that guy has some character work he he didn't really get to show off in WWE. Uh, Another name that just popped up. Um, I think she's going to be the announcement tonight, but if she's not, Sasha Banks could be the devil. She could be the boss and the devil. She could be the devil. I'm into it. New gimmick. I love it. All day, every day. Chase, how would you feel about it being a, a new debuting wrestler? I don't know that there are many people that they could sign that could do it and have it make sense for the overall story purpose. Because, like, Dolph would be cool. I'm a Dolph Ziggler mark for my whole fucking life. But, like, I don't I don't know that that makes sense. Um... I don't, I don't know that Mercedes makes sense, that Sasha Banks, whatever you want to call it, I don't know if she makes sense either. Um, it'd have to be somebody who currently or previously has had beef with MJF. I don't know that having it being a new person would work. Christopher it, Dance. He was almost the higher power. Why not make him the dead one? I mean, I could see that. But I wouldn't want that because at the stage Daniels is at, uh, no, not not anymore, man. Oh, another name we did we should have mentioned on the shouldn't list would be one Y two J Chris Jericho. Please no, no, please, please. I think we could do an episode on Chris Jericho in the state of his career right now. That's a man that needs to step away for a little bit. Less is more. I've seen a lot. Not and don't get me wrong. I don't even I wouldn't even say he's bad in the ring. I don't think he's bad in the ring yet, but it's still just a little too much, Chris Jericho. Is it presumed that the revealed individual under the mask is going to be taking the title off of MJF? Is is that safe to assume? I mean, if you want to compare it to the higher power line, it doesn't they don't really have to do anything. They don't have to get a world title. It could just be a play for power in the company. There's a lot of ways they could go with it. Um, I don't... Should the devil... That's that's the question. Does the devil take the belt? I don't know why I went with that voice. Does the devil take the voice? <laughs> take the voice. Does the devil take the belt? I forgot to have Jesus. Get it together. Ah. I, I could see it because especially if, if you're debuting a new, like, faction... It would be appropriate for them to get the world championship off of MJF. But going back to it being Adam Cole, hmm. do you feel if it's not Adam and they just kind of keep him on the sidelines and he just comes back and he's back to being buddy buddies with MJF, where where do you rank Adam Cole now in, in terms of usefulness to AEW? I mean, he's... I think, honestly, a lot of people shit on him coming into AEW kind of the same way they did Swerve. They had very similar past in where it's like they're never going to be as big as they were. They made a mistake leaving WWE. I don't think that's been the case for Swerve, but the man we're talking about specifically right now, Adam Cole, I think he's I think he's been great. I think the MJF stuff has took him to the top of the card. They made evented the biggest, uh, one of the biggest crowds in wrestling history. I mean, that's, that's something noteworthy. Um, and I think... If he wouldn't have got injured, um, which, you know, you can question the validity of the injury, but I think he might have had the world championship already. I think it's debatable. I mean, there's there's a lot going on in AEW. I mean, last night, I know it's not directly AEW, but it is owned by AEW. Ronda Rousey uh, appeared at Ring of Honor. So odd. Like, if, if you, okay, let's take out the this, this, the point that people dislike Ronda. That's fine. But she is a draw. So why would you put her on Ring of Honor randomly? And not it announce like it beforehand. Miss. It seems like a miss from Tony Khan, but it could have it could have really been random. It really could have been because they had the show at Revolver and the tag match involving the exact same people. And Athena was like, hey, I could probably get us booked on Ring of Honor tomorrow night. Tony lets us do anything. And she's like, yeah, I'll come. I mean, that it could have went down like that. It just seems so odd, though, to not want to save that. 
maybe, but like I said, if it was that type of situation, maybe Ronda's like, I don't really want to sign a contract. If I don't, I'll come to a pop up real quick. Like, not busy that night. It could have been that type of thing. It is the Wild Wild West over there. It is worth mentioning she is not under contract with ROH, AEW. She is on a handshake agreement with Ring of Honor to come in and do, I guess, whatever they need. I would imagine that they're going to try to lock her under some type of a deal in the near future. She does have a ratings grab to her, but I, in that's Ring of question, Honor. I guess that's the question we pose, right? Is if something worked out, if she does sign, would it be a benefit to AEW in the women's division or not? No. No. Not a... I, th- I think if you don't let her talk, I think she might be a benefit. I don't know, man. Her, she can't really cut like a good wrestling promo, and then like in the ring, in the ring, if she doesn't have the right opponent, I don't think it works. Um, so like, and I don't know how many of those right opponents they have in AEW for her. Like, they don't have somebody like Charlotte or Bailey or. Becky that can like really take control and like hold her hand and walk her through a match. Um, so I don't think it would, other than just solely off a of name value. Yeah. In ring wise, I don't think so. I don't think it helps at all. Right. And, and keep in mind how the mighty have fallen. I mean, ROH is not a, the a show by any means. It's not even their B show or their C show. Rhonda shows up on Ring of Honor. I mean, do you think she's there maybe as some developmental work? Wow, we're sh- this is shitting on Rhonda. I didn't even know where we're going. Have there, you brother. watched her in the last, I don't know, year? She could use a tune-up. But I saw clips from the Revolver show. I haven't seen anything from the Ring of Honor show. She looked like a million bucks from an in-ring perspective. Like, she looked like she had her shit together. But Rhonda is also one of the people we kind of brought up last podcast when she's motivated, I think she's really good. But I think she sometimes also loves the smell of her own shit a little too much. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I, I get that from her. I, I get that type of energy. But because I remember the aura she had when she first stepped in the ring in WWE. No one felt like, no one was like, man, this is bullshit. Like, there was some like, oh, she might be the female Brock Lesnar. I think you could rekindle that energy if you really tried. Not that they should, or they should spend any money. Spend all the money on Sasha Banks. You, let's make sure we get her in there first before we worry about Aranda. But I don't, I don't think it's the worst idea. It, it is also heavily rumored. I know you guys are going to be doing some coverage of the pay per view tonight. It is strongly rumored Bill Goldberg will be on. I've heard that. I've heard that. I think, I think, I think Tony has about five people he's going to sign within the next few months. Don't mess up the announcement. You know what I mean? I don't think you should announce this Goldberg. Because he said in the tweet, this is a lot of people that AEW fans respects. Tony can be dumb sometimes, but he also knows what he has in his fans. He has a lot of smart Mark fans. They're not popping if Goldberg shows up. That's a bad idea. I think Sasha's decent. I've heard rumors that it could be Osprey. Um, it could, I, I think Dolph's um, contract isn't up till like mid or late December, so I don't think it could be anyone from that crop necessarily. But, yeah, I don't know. What about if it's Mandy Rose? Does he get a cut of OnlyFans? Because, God, that's a deal, brother. You got to take that. I can't even blame the man. That's yeah, that would, be a, that would be an investment for sure. That's a way to get some eyes on your product, I guess. Yeah. For I, better or for worse. I feel, though, getting Mandy would be a, a big improvement to that women's division because of where she Mandy was. wasn't bad towards the end of her NXT run. She was great. She was fantastic. Yeah, she's got personality. She's got charisma. Um, Flap her in there with Tony and Maria May, bro. Make him a little trio. Just fucking tits up, shoes out, or whatever the saying is. Watch for the shoe. <laughs> Watch for the shoe. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Tits, tits up, up, shoes out. out. <laughs> that should be the new sign off for the show. At the end of every recording, just be like, all right, guys, and tits up, shoes out. <laughs> Remember when we started to talk about just who was under the mask? Yeah, this is this is what happens. We need to just stop coming into this with a set idea and just kind of let it go. Sometimes we freestyle. That's the yeah. best. 
that's the beauty of us three in the ring. It's a free bird rule, brother. So I'm Michael Hayes. Talking about the new signing, whoever it may be tonight, do we have any speculation on who they will reveal? Could it be Osprey, Goldberg, Sasha? If I'm putting my money on anyone, it's Sasha. I think that's the smart money. Think so? That's I got to put my money on Osprey. I think it. I'm going to go with Mandy Rose. All right. Someone's going to be right. I, I, I think. Not. But I think between Mandy and Sasha, that is who they need the most because, again, their women's division is improving, but it's been something that they have taken a lot of criticism for is the quality of it. And either one of those women vastly improved. That's somebody you build the division around. I will say, though, Tony Storm, best thing in women's wrestling right now. I, love oh, I think she's getting that strap tonight, brother. That's, a, that's not a prediction. That's a shoot. I hope so. A- everything Tony Storm is perfect right now. This is something mm-hmm. I wish she could have discovered four years ago. Her and Julia Hart, I think they're both winning the straps tonight and both are doing amazing jobs with their gimmicks. And if and if Malachi Black ends up being the devil, that just means more Julia Hart. How has nobody mentioned Malachi Black as, as under the mask yet? I, I mean, I haven't heard. I think because it's a name that would, it would raise their stock. And we're looking at names that are already up there. Not, it's not, that's not a diss on Malachi. He's just hasn't had the most main event run. You know what I mean? So being, I, I can see it being Malachi black because of the, the tie into this, the story that the darkness, all of that, it, it plays a great role as uh, chase takes care of some bad duty here. I'm trying here guys. <laughs> Oh, you're doing good, brother. Dad life. Oh, you're good. No, but I, I, I feel that Malachi Black could be a good a good pick. I think it'll ultimately end up being uh, Adam Cole. Adam Cole. My world's end. That's the prediction right here. He is shenanigans. We're in agreement, including the baby. We all agree. Adam Cole, world's end. No, the baby's crying at that. The baby don't like that answer. Well, she doesn't like the devil. That's fine. <laughs> he... He, he, he. I, you know, I don't like to assume gender. Yeah, That's so fine. It's sheets. 2023, dog. We can't be yeah. doing that anyway. Absolutely. Well, guys, as we get to the, the end of the episode, Mike. Well, we're going to do a little AEW themed push repackage in fire. I'm talking about Miro. I'm talking about Andrade. And I'm talking about Keith Lee. Push repackage fire. One of those tree. Uh, I'm going to fire Keith Lee. Jesus. I'm going to repackage Miro, and I'm going to push Andrade. Mm, interesting. Interesting. You got Ric Flair there. I think he's a great manager. Keep him out of the fucking ring. Mm. I would fire Miro. Jesus. Who are my options again? <laughs> Miro, Keith Lee, and Andrade. Okay, I'm firing Miro. I'm gonna repackage Keith Lee, and I'm gonna push Andrade. As Keith, is, yeah. Keith Lee just needs to like make him the bear again, or the bear cat, or whatever. No, that don't do was. that again. Just like I don't know, make Keith Lee cool again, bro. I don't know what the like. <laughs> make you, him cool. Just let him wrestle. That's really you all. You put it him takes. in a tag team with Dustin Rhodes, which like that's cool because Dustin Rhodes is great, but like also Dustin Rhodes is like a dinosaur. So, like, I don't know. Have him do something else. Make him a big monster heel and just have him, like, kick the shit out of everybody. Okay, here's my picks. We're firing Andrade because that gives less reason for Ric Flair to be there. We get him (laughs) out. Flair should be soon behind, brother. Push Keith Lee and repackage Miro. As, like, they're just making the Bulgarian brood again. Like, it works fine. Just have him hate America and just fucking come out in tanks and get blowies in him, whatever he does. <laughs> <laughs> whatever that rumor was that happened at WrestleMania. That wasn't a rumor. I think Lana had, had confirmed that that they. Took place. I think they both confirmed it in the tank, dog. <laughs> tank stories. Miro's Vince out here with the heavy watch. artillery. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> What if it's Batista under the mask? We didn't Gross. even say that. I'm done. Please, no. Gross? No. Dude, Have no. you seen his acting? If there's anyone I want to play a character, it's probably Batista. Okay, first of all, the person under the mask is like under six foot. Batista's like six six. Also, the person under the mask is a bit smaller, 
and wow, Batista's well, he's lost jacked. some muscle mass. So, oh, okay. Did he lose <laughs> half a foot too? It can be Batista. Okay, it's just an I idea. I don't think so, brother. Well, it it'll be interesting to see who uh, who ends up being under the mask. I, I think we could find out tonight. We could the the pick here seems to be Adam Cole as the most likely to be under the mask. But hey, if it's anybody hey. else, as long as it's not Ric Flair, um, I think we'll be all right. Hey, Tony Khan's booking, so anything's possible. Hmm. All right. Let's well, guys, for all of us here at Heated Shenanigans Podcast, thank you guys so much for watching and listening. Did you and hear what he said, heated. Scott? He's, he's he moving said? past. He said, what if it's Cornette? There's too many AEW guys here for it to be Cornette. Yeah, but he would be the devil to the AEW locker room. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you it'd be a All good right. one, and that would be Kane. Jeez. All right, bro, from the Heated Shenanigans Podcast, <laughs> it's been the boys. <laughs> See you guys on the next episode. Peace, Peace out. out.